And welcome to Brother Jed's living room and Brother Jed's new series on studies in American history. American history, I'm afraid, has been hijacked in our public schools and colleges and universities by the socialists, by Marxists, by liberals, by leftists, and students have come to have a disregard for United States history if indeed they know anything about it, because few study history today. But when it is all taught, it is often taught from a socialist uh, perspective. I believe in studying history from God's perspective, the providential history of the United States. And I believe God has guided the history of this country to where we are today. And we look forward to helping Donald J. Trump make America great again. And in this series, we'll be studying America's greatness. It won't be an attempt to put down America or talk about what is wrong about America, but we'll be talking about what is right about America. Now, I wear many hats. Primarily, I am an evangelist, propagating the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ on the college and university campuses of America. I've also served as a pastor for 15 years. I'm a Bible teacher. I consider myself as a, a theologian. I study God. These are my first loves. But my first love has not always been theology in the Bible. My first love academically was history. I, as an undergraduate at Indiana State University, majored in social science, minor in English, got a master's degree in United States history. I taught history for five years at the junior high, at the high school, and finally the survey course of United States history at the University of Wisconsin at La Crosse in the 1969 and 70 school year until, as I'm saying, went in those days I turned on, tuned in, and dropped out. Uh, became a hippie, counterculture socialist, finally got converted to Jesus Christ. And as soon as I got converted, I took a new perspective on everything, including American history. I used to present history of the United States from a socialist point of view, try to look at what was bad about our country. But now I need learn to appreciate through my new Christian perspective what was good about America and the strong Christian heritage of this country. Now, I'm wearing my Western hat today and my Western outfit to teach uh, this lesson. One of my favorite periods of American history is the period of Western expansion. I believe in manifest destiny. I believe this country was destined to, by God to sweep across uh, this uh, uh, fruited plain from the Atlantic Ocean to the Pacific Ocean and establish this great nation, the United States of America, that we as patriots love. I want to introduce you to a book called a People's History of the United States by Howard Zinn. This book was first published in 1980. And I have been intending to read this book since the 80s. I'm finally getting around to it. I just received my copy that I ordered from Amazon.com today. So far is all I have read is the introduction. And we're going to be studying this book because it's had a great impact on our nation and upon the thinking of American history teachers in the high school and college level in America and what people generally believe about our history today, which they consider it something we should be embarrassed about. But I think we ought to be proud of our history. I want to read from the back cover of this book, a blurb by Norman 
Komsky or Norm Komsky. Howard Zinn's work literally changed the conscience of a generation. Think of that. And the series of people's histories derived from this great work have provided new understanding of who we are and what we should aspire to be. As the 35th anniversary edition reminds us, this is a remarkable legacy. This edition came out in 2015. Who we are. And we are the people of the United States. We are a great and a powerful and a mighty people. And that's what we want to remain. Um, the, inter the cover of this book goes on to say, uh, a people's history of the United States is to tell America's story from the point of view of, in the words of, Americans, women, factory workers, African Americans, Native Americans, and the working poor and immigrant laborers. And it, basically, it's talking about learning American history from sort of the loser's point of view and not the successful people's uh, point of view. But we need to study history from these people's point of view as well. Uh, we need to know that. Too often we have just gotten one point of view of history, and that's worth noting, and Zinn makes a valid point there. Uh, as a historian, Howard Zinn shows many of our country's greatest battles, fights for wages, eight-hour workdays, child labor laws, health and safety standards, universal suffrage, women's rights, racial equality were carried out at the grassroots level against bloody resistance. The Howard Zinn was born in 1922, died in 2010 at 87 years old. He's called here a historian, playwright, and social activist. Let's uh, open up to the uh, introduction here, which is all I've read at this point. But we're going to be reading the whole book. Howard Zinn fundamentally, fundamentally changed the way millions of people think about history with his people's history of the United States. Zinn says too much history, he contends, is written from the point of view of governments, conquerors, diplomats, and leaders. Well, of course, history that is read is usually written from the standpoints of the victors, not of the losers in history. His people's history, by contrast, sides with the losers, the downtrodden, the underdog. It is a book disrespectful of governments and respectful of people's movements of resistance. And of course, we live in a generation in which there is a lot of disrespect for our government. And I fear often rightly so. It wasn't so when I was a boy, when I was growing up, institutions like the FBI were highly respected uh, by all Americans. And virtually no one would be critical of an organization like the Federal Bureau of Investigation. But it has become politicized in our generation and become a tool of sometimes the left, maybe other times of the right. I can't deny that. Zinn's, the, the uh, author of the introduction, and the uh, introduction is written by Anthony Arnold. Mr. Arnold was a colleague of Howard Zinn, and uh, basically he edited uh, many books, and he helped make a film that he and Zinn produced uh, together. Art. Arnold writes, 
that the movements of the 1960s and early 70s had nurtured a new generation of receptive readers, many of whom were moving into roles as educators in high schools and on college campuses. And of course, I was uh, radicalized myself in the 60s. I would say when I graduated from college in 1965, I did have uh, somewhat of a socialist mentality. Nevertheless, in the 1964 election, I had uh, voted for uh, Barry Goldwater uh, for president and had come from a conservative family. But of course, the 60s, the late 60s, uh, changed everything uh, in America. And it's uh, never really been the same since then, especially uh, as the products of the 60s began to get haircuts, shave their beards, and they became the teachers and, and the professors and the administrators of the 70s and 80s. And of course, now it basically have reached retired age, but people taught by them and led by them are even more uh, radical than they were. No, they don't have the long hair, they don't have the beards, but a lot of them have been smoking the, uh, the weed, which, uh, well, uh, prohibits people from thinking clearly, I'm afraid. The uh, introduction goes on to say, in 2014, in Colorado, students and teachers, some holding signs quoting Howard Zinn, walked out in protest when a local school board sought to insert its advanced placement courses, courses based upon Howard Zinn's book, A People's History, uh, because they wanted to pass a, a, a program which would, uh, and teach history, a, a history which would promote citizenship, patriotism, essentials and benefits of the free market system, respectful authority and respect for individual rights. And this is how I think history should be presented in our public schools. Again, a respect for uh, citizenship, patriotism uh, and, and the benefits of the free market system and respect for authority as well as respect for individual rights. Well, some of the followers and teachers of, from Howard Zinn's point of view and some of the students there walked out of uh, this meeting. In Oklahoma, in February 2015, members of the Common Education Committee voted to ban all people's U.S. history courses because they focus on what is bad about America. And that's true. I think we ought to be positive. Uh, not everything is good about America, but we have a history we should be proud of, and most of American history we can brag about and be patriotic about and and uh, be proud of. We need to be proud of our country. And these students we encounter daily on American campuses, they're not proud of America. They seem to hate America. Despite all these attacks, it says in the introduction of the book, even at the risk of losing one's job, people have continued to assign Howard's book, aside the assigned textbook, share their personal copies, photocopy sections for students, and read aloud passages of a people's history. In addition to drawing on the book, growing numbers of teachers across the United States use curricula and resources from organizations such as Voices of a People's History of the United States, Rethinking Schools, and Teachings for Change to Bring a People's History to Life in the Classroom. Now, I don't object to people uh, using this book, but I think it is often becoming the predominant text, the predominant thinking of our public schools. Certainly, our young people should be introduced to different perspectives on United States history and for maybe too long, they just did get one perspective. 
But now I think they're basically, we've gone to the other extreme. They're just getting the perspective of the socialist, of the Marxist view of, of history, rather than a providential or patriot's view of the history of the United States. Howard Zinn believed in laying his cards on the table. He did not hide behind the historian's easily available stance of distance, expert, uh, objectivity. He had a point of view and was happy to be challenged and engaged in dialoguing about it. And I'll give Zinn credit for that. He's very open on stating that he was somewhat of a socialist, something of a Marxist, something of an anarchist, and finally concluded maybe it would be best to just call me a democratic socialist. In other words, ha, uh, Bernie Sanders. Why was Bernie Sanders so popular on the college and university campuses? Why did an old fellow like that uh, get so much attention from young people? Because largely Howard Zinn was his forerunner. He paved the way for the acceptance of an open socialist like Bernie Sanders on the campuses. So this book has definitely had its influence. That's why I want to re review it uh, with you and study it together with you. So let's, you get the uh, idea of the book from the introduction. Now the first chapter of the book I'm looking forward to getting into, it's called Columbus, the Inmens and Human Progress. If you'll notice, we have hanging on the mantel in our living room, a painting, a copy of a painting, a print of uh, Christopher Columbus. And uh, he's pointing westward. He's uh, before the court of King Ferdinand and Queen Isabella. And she's got her crown jewels on the table, ready to donate them to finance Columbus's uh, voyage to find a passage to uh, India by sailing west. And of course, as a result, he uh, discovers uh, the United States. Well, excuse me, not the United States, but uh, what we would, what we come to call America today. And so we'll be looking into Columbus. Uh, Columbus is greatly under attack. There should have been a great celebration in uh, 1992, celebrating the 500th anniversary of Columbus's uh, uh, voyage, but it really did not amount to much. But I believe Columbus is one of the great figures of history. So in our next uh, visitation with you uh, to study and review Howard Zinn's book and American history in general, we're going to be looking at this great explorer, the great admiral of the ocean sea, uh, Christopher Columbus. So let me know what you think. This is a new venue for me and uh, reaching out on Facebook Alive and and YouTube, I'm more of a, a writer than I am and uh, speak, used to speaking in this venue. So be patient with me as I develop my skills over uh, uh, this venue. And, and we'll see how far we go with this. I'd like to make it a, a theme and have many lessons over the summer, maybe perhaps even almost daily lessons. But a lot of it depends upon how much interest there is. So let me know if you are interested in gathering and studying with me. I don't know what we'll have certain times yet. Maybe we can develop a certain time. We're on Facebook Live, but we'll also be posting uh, this on Facebook and on YouTube as well. And if there is uh, interest out there, I would like to uh, continue this. Of course, I've got other projects to do this summer as well. I'm uh, teaching on the Book of Revelation. You want to tune in Tuesday morning at 7 a.m. as we have a live stream of, of studying chapter 2 of the book of uh, Revelation. And so I'm anticipating an excitement as we study American history, study theology, study God, 
uh, this summer. I hope you'll join with me, and please do. Uh, make a comment, make a post, uh, things you'd like to see me do, how I might uh, improve uh, my uh, presentation to you. God bless you. Thank you for joining us this Saturday afternoon. Amen.